last Palmer Hotel advising a committee that they have declared situate at high risk for Tripoli due to a case in uh, North Marshfield. Um, the, the family of the patient um, travels locally and the wetlands environment um, in that area is similar to the area to what we have in our area here. And we do already have on record a um, dead llama from uh, Manlot Road about five or six years ago. So this is your case the one that was recorded on the news or is this, this No, this is a different one. This is a different one. No. Okay, you want to find my Dr. Brown from that part of We, a web blast has gone out. I've talked with uh, Patricia Vincesi, the superintendent of schools, John McCarthy, who's going to be cancel his activities after 6 o'clock every night. Um, I've talked to recreation. I've talked to the field coordinator. I've looked at DPW, police and fire. Um, and does that dusk change? You know, it's, it's Dust changes right right now. What we're advising is 45 minutes before sunset. And right now, that's 60. It's, it's about that, and it'll change with the time, with the sunset. And when we change clocks, it's going to change a lot. And also, it'll probably be in effect till the first frost or other considerations. But Definitely until the first frost. And who makes that that call? Uh, I'll probably make it in coordination with the state in the town. Is, is the first frost the only criteria? Uh, pretty much. Because pretty much. Um, at that point, they feel the larva will be killed. And tragic. Sorry, coming. I mean, that's where we sit in my field and all the handle. Uh, no, 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 well, the body field has canceled. Yeah, so, um, so, so, mean outdoor vending too? Uh, it should it's just be a precaution. I don't think. Well, uh, 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 a restaurant couldn't use outdoor patio. You can use it. You're right. You can only deal with the food here. Right? Well, just certain sort of precautions. You should take I mean, bug spray and whatever else you take. Really you stay out of the You really want your, your, your patrons at risk being out there. I mean, if, if, if they do go out, you should at least tell them that, you know, we're in a high risk area. Well, thank you for that update, Jennifer. We appreciate that. Uh, we're almost there for 710, so we'll, we'll give it a minute. So I usually have my clock on the back wall. And I'm looking at it over there for the official signal call time. audience here tonight. Uh, normally it's a very small audience. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot of people. Uh, this is the Board of Health. If you're here for Board of Health, you're in the right room. Um, I'm the Chairman, Russell Clark, and uh, Mike Baza to my left, and Frank Lynch couldn't make it tonight, but he's our other board member. So two are required to make quorum, so we do have quorum tonight. And, uh, whatever it is, we'll have. Thank <laughs> you. 
Official. 7 10 p.m. Public hearing, Title V, Septic System Installation, 159 Rear Glades Road. Gregory Morse, Morse Engineering, presenting for home. Uh, mailing receipts. This is Terry McGovern. Terry McGovern for the record, Terry McGovern from Morris Engineering. And we're here to give you with a sewage system replacement or repair at 159 Rear Glades Road. Um, existing house is here. This is off the Glades Road, is out to the north in this direction. This is the Wetland Marsh, runs around the back. Uh, we've done two or three other similar systems in this area, 143 and 145, I believe, or 141. And what we're requesting of the board this evening are variances from the property line setback. Uh, in this case, septic tank and the treatment chamber, which is a hoop uh, denitrifying chamber system. This is a, it's a drip irrigation system that uh, aerates and reduces the nitrogen in the effluent prior to discharge. And we're going to locate, because we're on a very small parcel, most of the parcel being taken up by uh, house and driveway in this location, a kind of a triangular shaped system over here. So we're coming into a standard 1,500 ga uh, gallon hoop treatment system, 1,000 gallon pump chamber, which will be pumped to the distribution box, uh, through not the distribution box, but the control box and then into the drip irrigation system, which makes its way back and forth through here, and then returns in the airplane that doesn't drip out back into the chamber. Um, the entire system is located within the 100-foot setback to the bordering vegetative wetland. A uh, small corner of it's located within 50 feet. Again, the shape of the parcel dictated there's no place else we can really, really put that. We've actually shown the only area that's usable. Uh, a couple of small trees will be removed in this location. Um, we're proposing uh, erosion control from the house around to the side. The system itself, what's, what's the height? Elevation on that is um, pretty much going to maintain everything at, at ground level, although we're pumping up slightly in this location uh, over the system itself. We're going to be about um, a little over not elevation nine and a half. And the system house itself is top of foundation is nine eight. This will actually be the chamber, and the uh, tank will be below grade. And this area we've shown spot shots nine five, nine five, nine four. So we're pretty much maintaining the existing grade. There's a tent running through the area. There's a nine running through just below that. So we'll have a little bit. Of show the nine kind of coming around. So you'll have about six inches of fill going towards the house, six to eight inches of fill in this location. Uh, you should be, yeah, I was going to say you should be entirely, that's over in the corner. Yep, AO flood zone. Yep. And with the existing system. And that's with the July 17, 2012 Yes, yep. Yeah, we're actually using all of the rooms now. Um, there is a cesspool, I believe. I was going to say out on this side, which is going to be there's a tank and pit just to the side. <coughs> is, is anybody here from James O'Connell? Uh, James Connell. Are there any about us to this or anybody interested in um, 159 Railway Road? Does any about us know? I'm the homeowner. Oh, okay. I have nothing to say. I'm no, no, you got your man doing it. That's what he's doing. He's doing a good job, too. <laughs> he's doing great. <laughs> These are the six um, local upgrades you're asking for. Yeah, and primarily, uh, again, setback. Uh, we've actually shown them on here as well. Actually, okay. uh, three. All setback. Tank, 
to tank and pump chamber to the property line, uh, system to the property line, and um, system to the salt marsh out here again because there's you know, one area where it swims in this location. No, it's like a typical shoe one or something. Like it, it is. You got to make fact, it work with what you got to well, do. Well, the fact that we're using the <laughs> the hoop system with the detail shown on the second page. Um, pretty much allows you to have the highest quality discharge of that form. And again, they pretty much handle the installation and maintenance of the system as a separate maintenance contract for it. And working through the different drip irrigation system allows us to site it within the natural grade. So this, this is an innovative component, so we need the deed restriction in the contract. Second, yes. all those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. We've got a few minutes before um, the next uh, part of our meeting is, is officially public and will be spoken to, but I'll, I'll take a minute here just to uh, say that uh, we're very interested in everything going on. Um, I want a controlled meeting. It's all coming through the chairman, so um, you know the, uh, people can present what they want to present. I'd rather not get into redundancy. We'd just like to keep it straight and to the point, and uh, we're very open to hear the information. Uh, I'm looking forward to this, but I want to just keep it orderly. So, um, you know, if, if, if one person is going to speak, would you, like I said, I just don't want to get redundant because I'm getting redundant. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I appreciate that, please. And, um, and then we'll have a chance to ask some questions back and gather some information as well. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, and we'll need two people when they speak. We're going to need names and address for the official yeah. record. So uh, Ms. Montanari can jot that down for the uh Yeah, the Mitch, if we, we'll, why don't you pass it around and anyone who tends to speak, if you just write your name and address. We have the lovely open meeting law we have to abide by, so we have to make sure we dot our I's and cross our T's. And, and I introduced earlier myself and Mike and I didn't, uh, Jennifer Sullivan, our uh, director of of Board of Health here in Situ. Probably most of you have met her from coming in the <laughs> office, but. More something we wanted to know <laughs> In person, so that's. Uh, well, I, I, some people say, well, I never want you to go. And I say, well, some days I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> and then I say, you know, I have a real great job. I'll give people as bad news. No, you don't. You let me build my septic system. I was happy. <laughs> people were happy with the price I for Yeah, 50000 <laughs> Yeah, it was a good one. <laughs> Just make sure that you come forward and sign it. Not sure, not sure. Jennifer, back to the business, so it's just a question. Uh, not, not directly, but the web blast went out. Um, it'll come out in the paper. Because the, the well, the state's making it. I mean, the word was quick like wow. I know, well, yeah, well, no, they won't have your financial for it. Not now. 
I know. Well, it's creating havoc in more than our community. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for your patience. It's officially uh, 7.20 here at Citro Town Hall. So uh, public hearing, wind turbine issues. And uh, I have here written Citro resident David Darty to speak to the board about wind turbine issues. So I look forward to hearing from David. I don't know if he's here or not. And anybody else that um, will, but David set the floor first, so thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, would you like me to do sit, stand, or where would you like me to go? Whatever you're comfortable to do, if you, I guess there's a chair there. If sure. I can take this chair, we can bring it around if you want. No, this is fine. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, may I take a picture of Mr. Darty? Yeah. 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 Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the sum. <laughs> Uh, first of all, before I begin, uh, feel free to interrupt me during my presentation if you have any questions rather than waiting for the end because I've got a lot of areas I'm going to touch on and, and you might forget some of your questions, okay? My name is David Darty. I live in, I've lived in Situate for the past 35 years. The last three of it on 122 Gilson Road with my fiance who is also co-owner. I'm a uh, Retired civil engineer, professional land surveyor, and an active uh, justice of the peace. I'm here tonight to inform you of a public health problem that has affected many residents of our community. The wind turbine located at the, located at the North River began operation early spring, and since that time has caused many problems to people in all directions and distances up to 3,600 feet. You might already be aware of this since some of your, from my fellow sufferers are here tonight, have already made complaints to the Board of Health, the Selectmen, and the DPW. You've probably heard the term wind turbine syndrome and discussed it as myth or thought it was some concocted ailment made up by people who just don't like wind turbines. Well, it does exist or something like it. There are many people suffering from ill effects of wind turbines some of them are here tonight, and I'm one of them. You'll hear testimony tonight from me and other neighbors as to their own personal experiences and the negative effects the turbine has had upon all of us. In my own case, I returned home late one June night after being away for nine months, and I drove by this, the turbine, and there it was up and operational. I was surprised by its size at first, but I assumed it wouldn't have any effect on me because I lived 3,200 feet away from it. You know, I said, well, boy was I wrong. It wasn't long before I was wakened from my sleep with a deep rhythmic whooshing sound. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. It begins as a deep growl and ends in a sweeping whoosh. Depending upon the speed and the direction of the wind, it fluctuates in intensity but to some degree its insidious presence is always there. In the still of the early morning, when nothing else is heard, when the air is cool and at its densest, it comes in the dark like an unwanted ghost, enters my home permeating the walls and entering everything in its path. It enters my body and wakes me from my sleep with my head pulsating to the rhythm of the turning blades. If I put my head against the bedpost, I can feel a pulsating like a part of the house. When I retire for the evening, if the wind is from the southwest, I can hear and feel the pulsating blades. And sometimes at the same time, I can hear the whine, the high whine of the turbine. The whine of the turbine can often be mistaken for the sound of a jet airplane engine, only it doesn't go away. It stays there all night long. 
I shut the windows facing the turbine, which is to the southwest, and my window, the windows are on the southwest of one side of the bedroom. I'll turn on the overhead fans to get air in an attempt to sleep. The need to shut the windows is very annoying to me because I enjoy the fresh air. On many evenings, the sound will resonate back across my house and bounce off the houses across the street that are on the ocean and come in the front windows and I'll have to shut those in two also. On many beautiful summer evenings, I become a prisoner in my own home, trying to find relief from the relentless sound and pressure. At night, my anxiety grows every time I go to bed. And when the sound is present, the more I try to ignore it, the more I seem to be aware of it. It is accompanied by a deep, almost perceptible pressure surge each time the whooshing sound occurs. I live to the northeast of the wind turbine, so it's when there's a south or southwest wind that puts my house downwind of it is where I'm most affected. There are other people here tonight who experience similar effects when the wind is from different directions. They'll tell their stories to you in just a minute. I've learned since that the deep penetrating effect that I'm feeling that attacks me like in a visceral manner, gets inside my body, is caused by infrasound, a low frequency sound wave below the human hearing. Although usually it's below, I think it's 12 and a half hertz. And they trans that's ability to transmit sound waves over a long distance and the ability to penetrate objects, unlike the audible sound that you hear, the whoosh, 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 is also another factor of it. I discussed the problem with my doctor, and the only thing he could do was prescribe Ambien to sleep. I take Ambien on average of three nights a week, either prior to sleep or after having been awakened by the turbine. On the nights that I'm able to sleep through the night, it's not uncommon for me to wake with a low-grade headache, low-grade headache, rather. And lately I've, been, lately, I've been suffering from ringing of the ears or tinnitus, another common symptom related to wind turbine noise. When the wind is not from the southwest and I'm not downwind of the turbine, the whooshing sound seems to fade, but I become more aware of the turbine noise. It sounds again like that jet airplane engine, and it prevents me from sleeping. I prepared a drawing, and I'll distribute it to you. It shows the position of the turbine and location to my home and the homes of other people who have been affected by the turbine. I expect after tonight, when the word gets out, there'll be more people coming forward. A lot of people are reluctant to talk about it for whatever reason, personal reasons, or whatever, but they're out there. I speak to them and they're afraid to talk. As you can see uh, in the center of the drawing, I have Situate Wind LLC. It's located uh, southwest of the uh, the water, uh, the sewage treatment plant. Yes, Jennifer? Are these a thousand feet each? Yes, I'm going to explain that in a minute. And I've drawn circles, the scale is one inch equals a thousand feet, and I've drawn circles around that to show the relative distance from the turbine that the houses are where I've had, I've logged in complaints and a lot of them, I'll, you'll, I'll read letters tonight from people who couldn't be present and some of the owners are here also to speak in their own behalf. You can see to the far right, 122 Gilson Road is about 3,200 feet up on top of the cliff, and that's my home. And all of the other red dots, they uh, indicate other, other areas of, uh, of uh, complaints. <laughs> uh, before I go on, it's interesting to note that uh, the topography of this area is, 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 re is, is unique in the sense that the turbine is on a low area. It's only 15 feet above sea level, as near as I can <coughs> ascertain from, from the drawing without doing a, an elevation uh, survey. And yet my house, it's on top of the cliff, along with the other homes that have complaints, we're 50 feet. So we're about one third up to the nocell area where the, where the actual turbine is. So it's like we're not down low, we're actually in an area <coughs> higher. Now, I suspect that that's got a lot to do with why we're feeling so many effects. 
Uh, again, I'll get into this later, that there really isn't anything as far as citing criteria out there that's defined in any bylaws or any state codes. Uh, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. The nearest house that you see there, the red dot closest, is owned by Mr. McKeever. Uh, he did some research into the negative effects of wind turbines and presented printed material to the planning board and the selectmen when the turbine was in its planning stage. I have minutes of those meetings, but they're also public record that you can access at any time. He was told not to worry about, about his concerns. It was harmless. The wind, wind, wind turbine was harmless. And he was quoted in minutes as saying, uh, Selectman Murray said, it's harmless. And if anything happens to you, Mr. McKeever, or your family, the town will be responsible. Well, that time has come. It's evident. It's here. You also see that it's affecting residents at James Landing. That's almost 3,600 feet to the west. They, they get that uh, effective when the wind is from the east or a sea breeze to the southeast. The green dot that you see down to the south or east southeast on Collier Road. That indicates an addition to the sleep deprivation and the other symptoms that, that I'll get into each one of those individual houses. Uh, shadow flicker. And that resident who will be here tonight to tell you her own story says that it lasts 40 minutes. And uh, she's not looking forward to the fall when the sun is low on the sky and the flicker comes back again. I might add at this point that the planning board, uh, during their permitting process in uh, April 8th of 2010, or was it 9? 10. They accepted uh, the engineering premise that 40 hours annually of shadow flicker is acceptable. Now since she has this for 40 minutes at a time, that would mean that they, the planning board, or because they, again, they didn't know any better, or the engineering people that sold this idea says that 60 times a year, because you only get shadow flicker once a day, so 60 days a year, she has to sit in her house with this flickering going that was used as, uh, I think it was torture or trying to break somebody's uh, will in, in uh, Chinese-American wars or something, not too much in history. They have, she has to endure this as being accepted in the industry, the wind industry. The wind industry is just incredible in the sense that there's no control. And they put these things and they sell these things. And, and anyway, I, I don't want to get off the track. We get people that are sick. I expect more people to come out again as this, as this, as this comes out. Uh, Although I began to feel the effects of wind turbine as early as June, I didn't realize the importance of documenting it until August. So if you look at the next sheet of my, of my uh, handout to you, <coughs> uh, there's a number of days in here I would be woken up and I would log on to the weather channel because it was dark out there. I couldn't see what direction the wind was blowing. And I would get the, <coughs> excuse me, Board of Health, this is heck on my gird. <clears throat> on August 1st, I was woken at 10.30 at night, and the wind was from the south, seven miles an hour. On August 4th, at 12.23 a.m., it's southwest at nine miles per hour. And this goes on and on. You can see two days later than the day after. Now, on the 14th, things changed a little bit. I didn't log the wind, but I suspect it because the turbine noise waked me up at 1259. It wasn't specifically from the southwest, but probably a little bit off of that. South, southwest, or south, or something to that effect. And the wind, maybe uh, something was happening. Topography of the land's got so much to do with this, and air temperature. Again, four days later, at 3.30 a.m. in the morning, the turbine noise waked me up, woke me up. And uh, I tried to go back to sleep, take sleeping pills. The 21st at 1.39 a.m., the 24th, I, I don't want to bore you, we'll go down here. On the 29th, I was 1 30 in the morning, I woke up with a headache. Uh, that was that, probably the infrasound or whatever, who knows how the human body reacts to these, these, uh, these waves that you can't see. 
will feel. I mean, you can feel them, but hear them. On the 29th, uh, the same day, that next night, because that was the morning I was woken up, and then we'll go down here. On the oh, September, on September 6th, uh, 1.30 in the morning, the wind was from the south, five miles an hour. That night, I got both, I could hear the whoof, 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 and the turbine noise, the airplane that never goes. Uh, let's jump down to the 12th at 3.22 in the morning. The wind was from the west-southwest, was was a peculiar wind, seven miles an hour. I woke up in a sweat, but pulsating in my head. And the windows were closed, too, which, you know, it really got me that night. I don't know why. On the third, I guess it's a cumulative thing. See, I'm, I'm retired. Unlike a lot of people that get to relief when they leave their home for the day to go to work, I'm there most of the time. So I guess it, it accumulates. Uh, I took, uh, on the next day, the windows were closed. I got a droning noise, which I think is the, the turbine. Sometimes it sounds like that. Pulsating in my head, I could hear the blades, the noise. I took Ambien, and I had a headache in the morning. And the 23rd, which was the last recorded date, I woke with intermittent pulsing in my head. I took Ambien at 158. I couldn't get to sleep. I took some more Ambien. I put the television on with a timer to try and mask the noise. Now, I've had some relief lately because the wind has turned around to the northwest, which means that it, I'm not downwind anymore. It's coming across my head. And maybe I should go down to Marshville and find out if those people out on Bartlett's Island or whatever it is are getting it because they certainly are within the reach of this thing. Now, I'm sorry, what? The weather's changing, so as the season goes, the wind's starting to shift. Yeah, and the air's getting denser, too, and like anything, uh, as we know, that the denser a medium, the better sound travels through it, both audible sounds and, you know, sounds we can't hear, just like underwater sound will travel further because of the density. Um, In an article to the editor of the Boston Globe, I grouped myself in an area, a group of people called the ignorant the majority. I had no idea that these turbines could have such negative effects on people living near them, simply because I had no personal knowledge or experience of it, as we all did, including the, the, our, our community leaders who, uh, who went to do this. I mean, you know, there's obviously a thing, a green maybe, you know, it's a good idea to try and conserve money and reduce our carbon footprint. But you have to rely on the people who have dealt with this before, the developers, the engineers, and I can't possibly believe, to digress here as a civil engineer, that uh, the professional engineers who did the studies of this aren't cognizant of the fact that in other communities people had problems, but yet there's no citing criteria like if I design something for you people, I'm a sanitary engineer. Engineers aren't very bright in the sense we're not too imaginative. I have regulations and criteria. Sure, I can't put a leaching field within 25 feet of buildings. I have to have 10 feet, the se septic tank has to be 10 feet from the building. I have to be 100 feet from, from wells. I can recite the Title V to you. If you fulfill all of that, you've done a good design. If something, something's wrong, you find some way to fix it, like breakout barriers and everything. But we don't have any criteria. So the thing's running rampant, and an engineer comes up and he only designs on one thing, and that's the DEP's consideration of when noise becomes pollution. And that's 10 decibels above the ambient background. I'll get into that later. I was called, the, I call myself the ignorant majority. I say that because I would learn the hard way. And everybody is that until we have it in our backyard. This is not a conspiracy of people who don't like alternate energy sources in their backyard, that we don't like, like turbines. This is not a case of not in my backyard. It's a case of not in anybody's backyard. Industrial-sized turbines do not belong in, in residential areas. 
Now you undoubtedly hear from other people, they may even be here tonight, who are going to say, they're not affected, that Darty's crazy old coot and everything. He's too sensitive. Suck it up. Doesn't surprise me. It's not uncommon for some people to be affected by something and others not. Just as you know some people become seasick or have motion sickness and others don't. You've seen people get deathly ill from this. You know, turning green and vomiting. And you feel sorry for them. But with this wind turbine business, because somehow it's going to affect our pockets or whatever, people look at us differently. We're sick. It's affecting us. And it's not an unreasonable thing to figure that these low energy waves, below 12 and a half hertz, <coughs> can stimulate the hairs on the cochlea, which is in our inner ear, and that has a direct influence on motion sickness. It, it's not a hard thing to imagine that maybe there's some connection. Again, I'm not an MD, but there's a lot of MDs, uh, I've read a lot of material that they say there's a connection. I'm just a civil engineer. Some people take months of exposure to realize their bodies are feeling impacts. Just like some people have to be in a boat for a long time before they get sick. And so many people leave during the day and they come back. But the fact is, that thing's exhibiting this waves all the time when the wind is blowing. In fact, in countries where wind turbines have been in operation for many years and people have been subjected to sound vibration, They've developed a disease called viroacoustical disease. And that actually changes the physical characteristics of the cells in the body. It usually attacks the vascular system when people get hardening of the arteries, which is fatal. That's not very common, but it does occur, which goes to show you what these things can do. The characteristics of each home the location of the bedrooms, and the topography of the land surrounding it are all factors that have an effect as to who's afflicted and who is not. Is it fair to ignore and sacrifice those that get sick because we need alternate sources of energy? Granted, we're a power hungry country and we need more and more energy, but where are we going as a society if we sacrifice the health of a few for the greater good? I use that term greater good since I first heard it in the office of the DPA, DPW director in Situate. He is where I made my first complaint to. And he oversaw the entire permitting and the building of the wind turbine. Uh, he was the point person in the thing. And he said to me it was built for the greater good. And later he was quoted in the Boston Globe with the same quote. Am I understand that he feels it justifiable to sacrifice the health of a few people for something he deems more important? I hope I never have to share an, an overloaded lifeboat with a man. And I hope that our feeling is not shared by our elected officials who move too quickly in accepting the turbine in our residential community. If you think I'm imagining all of these effects that the wind turbine's having on me, or my other uh, fellow neighbors, I invite you to spend a night at my home and feel it yourself. I don't have any problem with that you know, because I'm not making this up. I have better things in my life to worry about. Matter of fact, I kind of like the looks of the thing. I know what direction the wind is blowing. At first it was a big thing and I thought it was you know, ugly, but I'm getting used to it. But one thing I'll never get used to is getting sick. It is our evident that from our experience that people further away are impacted as greatly as those close by. If you look at the next picture in that package, it's a photograph, you'll see this is taken of an offshore wind farm off of Denmark, and it's intriguing because apparently by because of whatever atmospheric condition it was, whether the humidity <coughs> was right or like you look at calm trails by airplanes, you can actually see the, the, the cone of disturbance that's created by one of these, these uh, wind turbines. And you can see it starts out small and then spreads out. So people underneath it are directly, maybe slightly uh, off to the left or right when the wind is blowing from a direction, may not feel the impact, but those people further away could. You would think, wow, the people closest by uh, are most impacted. Not always the case. But these sort of things are never taken into consideration when it comes to citing them.
The blades are on average 1.5 megawatt turbine, and that's what we have. We have a Centerville 1.5 megawatt turbine, as you're probably aware down there. They weigh somewhere between five and six tons. I couldn't get the specific number from, from their site. This means there's approximately 18 tons of spinning rotors producing an enormous amount of turbulence. And you can imagine why we're feeling all this. You can imagine what the effect of this vibration and sound has on the human body. Now, this is what I was alluding to earlier. It's important to know that at the current time right now, the Mass Energy Center, Clean Energy Center, in conjunction, in partnership with the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Engineering, the DEP, has out on the street a $400,000, excuse me, <coughs> R RFP soliciting the help of a qualified acoustical consultants. The 18-page RFP, and I think I put it in your package, is, 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 a, is going to be testing, asking to be testing 12 turbines in Massachusetts currently operating, and maybe more, they say in there, with distances to be set at 750, 1,500, and 3,000 feet away. It acknowledges in there the presence of infrasound. It specifically states in there from the test for infrasound those frequencies below 12 and a half hertz. The RFP also asks for testing inside and outside of buildings because they realize that the infrasound penetrates the buildings and has different effects inside the structure. It also wants the topography of each site to be recorded. It's evident that the DEP is aware of virtually non-existent data out there when it comes to properly siting these industrial wind turbines. And concurrently, they got a little earlier start, the Canadian government is also in the midst of an extensive study to determine the effects of wind turbines. It was because of that study that the Plymouth Planning Board has recommended that their town pass a two-year moratorium on permitting of new industrial-sized turbines in residential areas until studies, adequate studies have been done so that they can see for themselves and adopt a proper bylaw to cite these things before they put another one. I guess they've had three permits down there in the Hedges Row and down through there, and they got a mass of others that they're trying to put in. I want to, I think it's in your package, I think the next document in there, I want to read to you a letter, or portions of it, from the president of the Massachusetts Senate, Therese Murray. Uh, she sent this on the 18th of September to the Plymouth Selectman because of this controversy going on there. She says, I write to you to express my support for the language recently recommended by the Town of Plymouth Planning Board to enact a two-year moratorium on wind energy facilities in residential zones. I have consistently stated that industrial-sized turbines do not belong in residential neighborhoods and that siting standards are needed to ensure these turbines are not placed too close to homes. Residents' health and well-being should not suffer as a result of this project. I testified before the plan board, I was gratified that one member of the plan board said, if one person is sick, that's too much for me. Um, I'd like to read to you a few letters from people who couldn't be here tonight. I only made one copy of them. Excuse me. Maybe, and, uh, but no, I'm not reading all of those, only a few, because I, I don't want to take too much of the board's time. I was going to say, I bet you we've got testimony here. And we well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to duplicate the people who are going to speak. Right. I'm only going to, and, and if somebody has slipped in on me that I don't know is here, that if I start that letter, please speak up. Uh, this home is 3,000 feet from it, from the turbine. It was written by Michelle Bannon. I know she's here tonight. Yeah, she, she emailed us. <coughs> okay. I live at the corner of Driftway and Gilson Road. Perhaps due to the wind direction or the direction of the turbine blades, I'm reporting and issuing a complaint due to the excessive noise it caused last night which sounded like jet airplanes flying above or a freeway in the distance. I resorted to listening to sleep app on my iPhone to drown it out. 
As a matter of fact, I can hear intermittent whooshing sounds right now as I sit in my kitchen and type this. I've heard the turbine before, but not to this degree. Now that the windows are open and the AC is off, the noise is an infringement on my quality of life. She goes on that she re reported it to you people. This is written from a resident at James Landing. And uh, to all, I'm writing to you as a private citizen, even though I'm currently a board member and president of the James Landing Condominium Association. Placing a wind turbine so close to residents in this town is very disappointing to the owners here, visually epidemiological, logically, epi epidemiological reasons. Excuse me if I mispronounce it. I already suffer from vertigo and tinnitus. I have noticed an increase in frequency and magnitude of my symptoms as well as more severe migraines since the onset of operation of the windmill at the sewage treatment facility in Situate. At the time of licensing the windmill, you remember that the PC Green push from the Commonwealth disregarded all the negative epidemiological evidence about positioning <coughs> wind turbines near residences as unfounded. There are a number of sites, if placed, the number of affected people cannot be ignored and these sites must be forced to close down. Also from James Landing, Pat Shea. We moved into James Landing in May of 2010. We chose our condo because of the view of the North River, the nature and the quiet of the evenings. Our evenings on our deck and in our bedrooms are filled with an irritating, sound disturbing whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. We have to close our windows to nature and fresh air to be able to sleep. This home is 3,200 feet away. It's from Elise Russo at 19 Driftway. Just wanted to let you know that my neighbor Valerie Vitali called the town a week ago after a particularly loud night and spoke to the head of the DPW Works. He said he would look into it. I also forwarded this to a woman who owns a property behind me. She said her whole body vibrates from the turbine. The sound has kept me awake at night depending upon the wind and atmospheric conditions. I would hope that the town would consider turning it off at night. This next person 3,300 feet from it. My name is Donna Phipps. My husband's family has owned 62 Gilson Road since it was <coughs> built by my grandfather in the 1920s. Personally, I am not opposed to the sight of it. It is graceful. However, my biggest concern is a big one. It is the sound. Our stay on Gilson Road was during a lovely cool time. We enjoyed having the windows open at night to catch the sweet breezes. Unfortunately, many nights these breezes were accompanied by the incessant whoomp, whoomp, whoomp of the turbine. Anyone who has ever been kept awake by the sound of a dripping faucet can identify with how annoying the sound is and how it becomes increasingly so as one becomes more and more sleep deprived. Of course, deprivation is the biggest problem with this. As happened to me, I wanted to go outside and scream at the turbine. I truly feel sympathy for those who live within that sound like a earshot of the sound. I truly feel sympathy for those who live within that seems like a long earshot of the sound, can't sleep because of the noise and have to work or take care of their family the next day. It is really horrible. I just shake my head and wonder who made the ridiculous decision to place this turbine anywhere near people live. 3,500 feet away. <clears throat> this is from Paul Orenberger, my neighbor across the street. He's even further away. He's at 127 Gilson Road. I have experienced issues concerning the new wind turbine built on the driftway. Sleeping with the windows open, I have heard the constant whoosh, 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 whoosh of the situate wind turbine. It has caused issues with my sleep, and by the way, closing the windows is not a solution. Part of living in our section of the situate is being able to leave the windows open and catch the wonderful breezes. I'm almost done. 3,200 feet away. <clears throat> this is my next door neighbor. Stephen and I live at 120 Gilson. We see the wind turbine from our living room and we are kept awake at times by the very loud whooshing it makes. <clears throat> Sounds like an airplane overhead that never goes away. We thought that in the winter with the windows closed, it might be better. 
But just the other night, we had to close the windows and we could still hear it. I read in the article in the Globe and was dismayed by the comment that Rick Murray made about not being out at 2 a.m. to hear it. I've heard it clearly at 2 a.m. Stephen called town hall to ask about it and was being put up and no one got back to him. When he called again to notify them about the noise, he was told that no one had complained. <coughs> well, I could go on, you know, I have them here, on and on and on. You have more letters than I have here that I wanted to read. I don't want to give us a very good case of that. Uh, yeah. Um, You have all the facts I've stated and all the evidence I've presented, and with further testimony you're about to hear, I request that the Board of Health take immediate action and use any and all means available to eliminate the detrimental effects of, oh, excuse me, let me start. Here's also a list of complaints, singular complaints from a lot of citizen residents, each quoting the time and the dates, hopefully the direction of the, of the wind and, uh, and the, also the speed. Those are, I don't, some of them are, the, are from the people who wrote the letter, but others are not from people who wrote the letter. You might find other people in there that have complained. Mm -hmm. I request that the Board of Health take immediate action and use any and all means available to eliminate the detrimental effects and remove this hazard from our community. You have the authority under Massachusetts General Law 111, Section 122, to take immediate action. I would think that the testimony you have heard from me and the testimony you are about to hear from others would be compelling enough to make you take action. You have a responsibility to the state, you have a responsibility to the community, and more importantly, you have a responsibility to your own conscience to do the right thing. I urge you to shut this public nuisance down until a complete study is done to determine proper siting criteria for industrial sized turbines. I further urge you to draft and adopt a responsible local bylaw, one that prevents the construction of industrial sized turbines in the residential areas. I have one last thing to give you before I call up some people. And I wasn't going to read this to the end, but I see we have some others out here that are going to have. Uh, something to say in rebuttal to, to, uh, to my presentation, so I want to read this to you now, even though it's a little bit earlier than I would like to present it. We the undersigned, all being residents of Situate, Massachusetts, and suffering from some of, all, or not limited to do, the following symptoms, sleep deprivation and accompanying exhaustion, dizziness, headaches, nausea, ringing of the ears, fatigue, irritability, ear pressure, vertigo, blurred version, vision, racing heartbeat, high blood pressure, anxiety, tachycardia, and difficulties with concentration and memory, and knowing this to be caused by the Situate Wind LLC, petition the Situate Board of Health to take any and all means necessary to remedy the situation, including the immediate shutdown of the wind turbine. It's signed by 21 residents and affected people. I present that to you. Does the board have any questions for me? I do. Yes. Um, I know <coughs> from what you said, we found, we found a lot of variables here. And I know some people are bothered inside their houses um, more so than others. Did you do any comparison to the age of the of the buildings mm -hmm. or the type of construction they had, <laughs> like if it was brick versus wood or and if, if somebody's got newer more some of those newer windows versus the old kind? No, I can I'm thinking about yeah. the, I'm mm -hmm. thinking about the vibration you're talking uh -huh. about inside and that 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 maybe the sound is 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 hitting the building as a whole 
and causing some of that to vibrate as well as the air inside? No, I didn't do that. I know that uh, one time in the, when I finally got around to it, um, I got, when I'd woken up, I got out of my bedroom, which is well insulated, and I went into the storage room, which is over the garage, it's not insulated, and it seemed to be profoundly louder in there, the, the actual noise, but I didn't stay in there long enough to find out if the vibration and the pressure was more significant than the other side of the house. <coughs> um, our particular house, one portion of it, and uh, Joanne, my fiance, I'll tell you, where she ran off to, because she can't sleep in the front bedroom, was built in 1871, and that's where she runs off to. The newest section of the house is where I still stayed in, is the, that was built only 10 years ago. Uh, maybe she can give you some opinions on that, because uh, uh, the bed in that room is too small for the two of us, so I don't <laughs> But uh, I don't want to tell you about that. But hey, thank you for that uh, yeah. presentation. I, okay. I, yes, no, that was, uh, you put a lot of information together. I think you brought a lot of people together. It's good information. It's, there's a lot there to digest. Um, I'd like to ask, is the person here that had the flickering complaint, are they, could you tell us a little bit about that? I, yeah. I, he briefed on it, but I'd like to yeah, hear from I, that. I, I, I wrote this thing, but I don't need to. Sure. I don't want to. Um, I, I'd also, excuse me, I'd like to hear from Mark McKeever. No, no, that we'll get to that, David. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, I'm not going to read from mine, but my name is Sally Rossi Orman, and I, uh, my home is at 27 Moreland uh, Road. And um, my house faces west. My house is very modern, even though it was built in the 80s. It's all windows and, and cathedral ceilings, and I enjoy my glass of wine at the end of the night, and sitting on my deck as my father did for the 20 years or so that they lived there as well. Um, that's where I entertain, um, and that's the side of the house that I enjoy. It's not facing the ocean, it's facing the sunset as I go down. Um, I'm uh, uh, an environmentalist, I'm an ecologist. I teach sustainability and uh, stewardship for the land as a profession. Um, I am pro-wind. I am uh, pro um, any alternative energy than uh, using fossil fuels. When I first heard about the turbine being built, I thought, hey, situates modern society, let's go for it, maybe get some tax um, write-offs or whatever. And I was really um, pretty much gung-ho for it. Um, it wasn't too keen when I kind of figured out where it was going to go, but I thought, you know, whatever. Um, I was a little naive about turbines. I thought they were supposed to look like the one on the expressway when you go into town, the Union. Um, advertisement, and I thought that was about the size they were supposed to be, um, other than the one that I saw at the end of World's End uh, on the commuter boat, and I thought, okay, you know, it's way the heck out of the way. So when I had this thing being built, uh, I actually took a series of pictures of it, because I couldn't believe that I was actually seeing it from my driveway, or in from the front of my house, because it's, as I said, I live up on a cliff. And um, so I thought, okay, um, I, I was glad to find out that it doesn't, um, move all the time. I thought that, well, that's kind of cool. But I was floored when it really started to go uh, and move and when the sun sets right behind it. Um, for I've counted it. It's like 42 minutes. I sit in my living room and I watch everything on the wall shift for 42 minutes. All the reflection coming in through the front windows um, from my front deck. Um, the first time it happened, I you know, middle-aged, I thought it was having a stroke or something. I, I couldn't quite tell what was going on, and I realized, oh, it's the turbine. And I'm like, okay. And then I started to realize that, you know, the leaves are on the trees right now. It was in April when it started up. And I'm like, holy crap, how is this going to be like the other six months of the year when there's no leaves on the trees? So I am very much affected by the flicker. It, that's where I sit and read the newspaper. That's where I had my little glass of wine. Um, that's where I entertain my friends, and it's this um, waiting for it to come, uh, you know, every night uh, when the wind is facing, um, the turbine is facing, um, facing me. Um, maybe it will shift, I don't know. I am affected by the sound as well. Um, again, I like to sleep with my windows open. Um, I like to listen to the Coyotes Bay on the on a little salt, water, on the, on the salt marsh, and I like to hear the clang of the the, uh, the bellboy out there, the crickets and such, and um, I get very much annoyed for that. 
and this airplane in the sky, it's like a night gallery kind of thing. It's like the plane never lands. It's just out there. And it's very annoying. Um, I have enough trouble going to sleep when I have a 12-year-old ho at home and a man in a midlife crisis. So I really appreciate my sleep. So other than uh, putting a pillow on my ear and um, turning on my side, it's about the only way I can fall asleep when that's those kind of conditions. But um, I think the flickering is really what affects me more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody, I, I, I'm just curious, in, in, you're in the, what is it, about yeah. 1,000, 2,000, in the, probably about 2,800 feet from, from the wind turbine. Is, is there anybody here in the, in that 1,000 foot area, is there anybody that can speak? You actually, is there anything you'd like to say? I, I, I'm just curious, <coughs> I to build it out. I mean, we've got um, My name is Mark McKeever. I'm at 151 Driftway. I am 640 feet from the turbine. Um, and some of you, you know, are able to open their windows. I built my house four years ago, and when they constructed the wind turbine, my windows haven't been opened. Um, the noise, the vibration is just... <clears throat> so your location at 640, you're hearing it all the time. It's constant, no matter which way the wind One hundred percent of the time. Okay. All I right. cannot get away from it, and uh, I live in jail every day. Um, I go to work. I come home from work. My wife stays home with the kids. My children. Um, I have an 11 year old and a six year old, um, and it's they have not had a full an eight hour night sleep since that thing has been up. And how do you explain to an 11 year old little boy? Yeah, it's good. Understand, understand. Um, thank you. Is there anybody a, a little further out? And I mean, that's within the six boys. Is there anyone around the 2000 uh, or uh, 2000? Would, <coughs> would you like to speak? Sure. <coughs> name and address, please. My name is Jerry Kelly. I live at 56 Moreland Road. Um, I'm a, I'm a, somewhat of a newcomer to town. We moved here about 35 years ago and we've been out in this house for 30 years. Um, we, um, in every room in our house, save two um, uh, bathrooms, we are treated to a view and a vibration from the um, uh, tower. And Jennifer, our house was rebuilt in 2007 with state of the art, not hurricane windows, but the grade just below that Mormon. Uh, and it doesn't help. Uh, we, um, the thing that, uh, our issue is sleep deprivation and other associated medical issues. Um, you know, I read the, the feasibility studies for this and the justification was it's in a commercial zone. You know, these idiots, me, were stupid enough to buy at a place where the sewage treatment plant was and the cell tower was. So given the fact that it's a blighted area, let's just make it more blighted. Um, I fear greatly as we move forward to the winter months, the northwest wind, the flooding of the marsh, which will just amplify the sounds from the, um, uh, from the windmill, and the cold weather. Um, we, um, I too am a green supporter. I was asleep at the, at the switch as this thing was being contemplated. I never thought I was going to be looking at a structure roughly the equivalent height of the Hancock Tower. I just, it just never crossed my consciousness. And it never crossed my consciousness that this would be a commercial wind turbine that other responsible vendors would not locate in a residential area. And I believe the uh, feasibility study studied a Japanese turbine, a GE turbine, and a Philly <coughs> turbine, but not the one that was installed. Uh, I'm just, I'm astounded at the disregard for the citizens of Situate. I haven't gone for a tax abatement. Uh, I'm sure that many people in the room will because the value of my property and the quality of my life is significantly diminished as a result of the installation of the wind turbine. 
understandable. And, and that affects you um, all the time? Or no, it wind, depends upon... It's the wind direction where you are. The okay. wind direction, when, when the turbine's operating, and yeah. the big concern with it is, I guess these things are most efficient somewhere between 6 and 10 miles an hour. Once the wind gets above a certain speed, it will still operate, but they used the turbine as a braking mechanism for the, uh, at that point in time, at which point the sound just amplifies like crazy. So as we go into the winter months, yeah. watch out. You're saying the sound's worth above 10? Yes, because they need to use the turbine as a braking mechanism uh, for the... Um, for the, uh, for the Efficiency, right? Well, no, it, it's unsafe above a certain speed for it to be spinning at that speed. Thank you, sir. I, I, I appreciate that. I, we've heard a little bit of testimony from a little bit around the area. So, I mean, if somebody has something new to add, I, I'm more than interested to listen, but I, I think, you know, we've covered a lot of it, but please. Yes. In your name and address, please. My name is Valerie Vitale, and I've lived um, in Citrus for 31 years and put my um, heart and soul into my home at um, 34 Dreshway, so you know I think three minutes of your time, even if it's redundant. Um, our family home, our garden, uh, my art studio, we tried to create at the top of the hill on the driftway, you know, a place of tranquility and peace. I don't know who you are, you take my picture, but we'll talk later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sign of relief, yeah. uh, relief for that, I'll read. You know, a lot of, a good side. <laughs> a lot of um, time and work and love and money has been put into this property, and it is pretty much where we sleep is a modern, 10 years ago was modernized. So um, windows open, windows closed, we hear it. Because we're at the top of the hill, close across the, the golf course, um, save for many mature leafy trees, we look right at the turbine. So it is the, the thing about third cliff being higher than um, the level where the turbine is built. So we're up, you know, from the turbine. We hear it. Everything from a low repetitive airplane circling noise to a disturbing vibration like a marble rolling around in a washing machine. This rrr, rrr, and it gets worse, you know, people have said all about when it gets worse and when it's better. Um, we do not hear just a wind noise. You know, when I talked to Mr. Banger, when I called complaints, said, is it a whooshing noise? I've never heard a whooshing noise. I hear this rrr, rrr. The noise issue was not mentioned until it was being erected. That was one of the last um, meetings they started talking about the noise of the airplane. The thing was already, you know, in the works. Well on its way. Because of the topography, which um, David mentioned, of the golf course and the marsh and the river valley, noise to Third Cliff seems to be amplified. The town has placed restrictions on Situate Country Club, for example, because of proven noise disturbances in the past. If the noise had been mentioned prior to construction, we could have addressed it. Our visitors ex all exclaim about the proximity to our home and other residences and the size. Some of our visitors work in alternative energy and green energy, um, and they are shocked by the size of this thing, shocked that it was allowed to be so close to residences. You know, they say, what's wrong with your town? <laughs> our sleep patterns have changed. We have trouble going to sleep and are awakened around 4 a.m., and that's new. Is it the turbine? I don't know. Oh, that's happened. We have not yet experienced flicker issues because the season has not yet arrived for the sun to be directly behind the turbine for our location. As a visual artist, that's going to be very disturbing to me. We hear it, it's very disturbing, and we hope that the noise is the worst of it for us. I mean, all these other symptoms we have, but is it the turbine or is it just you know, who we are? Um, I think what we didn't anticipate, even though we went to the meetings, was the size of the thing. And even though my husband was saying, you know, to neighbors, it's a Hancock Tower, and nobody was, you know, because it, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable that it happened. And it's my understanding that it could happen again, which is, you know, I'm going to slip my wrist and bleed in the road because my home that I love is, is not going to be my home that I love anymore. And I thought the town would have our back on this. So it's heartbreaking. And I don't mind the look at the, and you know, the trees, and, and you know, I'm, I'm okay. I was, I was trying to deal. I was trying to deal until the noise started. Um, I, I just want to put two cents into. Actually, I had. Who uh, are you? Oh, I'm Bruce. Bruce Beagley, 68 Collier Road. Uh, lived there for 22 years with my wife Kathy. We raised both our kids there. Um, 
I had kind of a long speech set tonight, but I don't want to be redundant. Uh, pretty much what Dave and, and Jerry had said, uh, we're experiencing too. We're down lower though. We're almost on the beach in front, and there's sort of a hill behind us. And uh, it still disturbs our sleep many, many nights. Uh, we have trouble getting to sleep, it'll wake us up in the middle of the night, and we have trouble getting back to sleep. Uh, very often we have to turn on a fan or some other kind of white noise to go to sleep. Um, you know, I, I personally, I think, uh, you know, after, after learning of some of the potential health problems that these machines cause, they have no business being in residential areas. Um, and, and, you know, the town of Sitchwood may be saving a few dollars here and there on their electrical bill, but it's at the expense of the welfare of, of everyone that lives in our neighborhood. And that's not right. And I think the right thing is to shut it down. Thank you. And to pick up on the welfare, um, Dave, you have sought medical um, treatment. Um, do you know if many of the others have? Uh, <coughs> a few others, I, I through some of the emails, with one, there's one party, uh, I haven't been able to contact her directly and communicate, although she did write an email saying that, that she is uh, suffering from uh, nausea and uh, 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 vertigo, and she's under doctor's orders, and, uh, and she supposedly has letters from her doctor. I've been trying to get a hold of her after that. I don't know why she hasn't been responding. Um, somebody else, too. Uh, this has gone so fast for me in the last few weeks, I'm on the computer all day answering, I get them all confused and everything. <coughs> I do get those letters, I get them to give me some solid uh, letters from you, I will get them to you. That would be good to have. Tr trust me, yeah. any further information I have or evidence from any new parties or anything different, I will give to you. Yeah, uh, yeah through to Jennifer, yeah, yeah. Board Health Office, thank you. But we, we, really, we, really, we really need you folks to do what you're supposed to do. No, the information you have provided is perfect. But I mean, and, we need yeah. you to protect us. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and you need all the information that, that you can have so you can do that properly and feel justified. And that's what we're trying to do. You understand it too, being an engineer and a, and a surveyor, perfectly. Thank you. Thank you. My sure. um, grandmother, who is at 141 Driftway, yeah. um, 87 years old, um, she can't sleep either. Uh, she doesn't want to get sleeping pills or whatnot, um, we need to get her some help because she's not sleeping. Mm -hmm. My two children, um, my wife and I, uh, torn mm -hmm. because, you know, they need their sleep because they need to get a good education and they go into school and, and just having a doggone tough time just concentrating. They're very, 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 very well behaved children and they're just having a very difficult time concentrating because of the sleep patterns. You know, you'll get woken up at two o'clock in the morning and you get your arm tugged, daddy, daddy, you know, oh, come on, let's go back to sleep. And my sleep pattern's broken and I have to call, you know, come lay with them to try to get them back to bed. Sometimes they won't go back to bed for three, four hours at, at night and then they have to put them on the school bus to go, <coughs> and, you know, go and try to, <laughs> try to learn. It's, it's, it's impossible. And you know, you, you try to teach your children, obviously, to do the right things and to act a, a specific way. And my 11-year-old boy is like, Daddy, why did they allow this thing to be built next to our house? Why? And I don't know, I, I want to tell him the truth and I don't have an answer for it because it shouldn't have been put there. It shouldn't have been. And it just got shoved down our throat that it got put there. Very disappointing. <clears throat> Um, do you have another thing to add? Yes. yes, please. Just two points. The first one is I'd like to thank Selectman Murray for coming to my house after I complained the first time. And he stood outside my door. He heard the noise. He said, I want to investigate. He, and this was during the day when you have leaf blowers and everything else going on at the corner of Driftway and Gilson. He went to the golf course. He could hear it there. He went to Go Green to make sure it wasn't their equipment, and it wasn't their equipment. So I thank him very much for acknowledging, coming back, and telling me, yes, there is a noise, and it is from the turbine. Secondly, regarding people who are seeking medical assistance for these ailments, 
I believe that's why countries like Canada are having federal studies done, so it's regulated and standardized as opposed to each person going to their own doctor and getting sleeping pills or listening to something on their iPhone, et cetera, et cetera. So I believe it's a lot larger than the people themselves <coughs> seeking this information and giving it to you. I believe it has to be standardized. It's personal. Yeah. Is there anything else that anybody has to add? Do you have any questions? Like I, at this point, um, there's some great information presented, and there's a lot here. This board has to take this under advisement. Um, there's a lot we have to learn, too, and I've got a pile of information from this side here, and I've, I've, I've got to see where it's going to go. I'm missing a, um, a key player here to my right, and um, I think in two weeks we'll be able to come back and look at this again and take it under advisement. That's... May I say something else? Yes. This this is not a problem. It's just in situ. Yes. I mean, you're aware that they have these problems in, in, uh, Falmouth. in Falmouth and Kingston, and I, mean, I could go on and on and on. I mean, it's just not not state either. In Wisconsin and Maine, and I mean, I don't. I'm very very confused that that the preponderance of medical problems that have occurred around these industrial sized er turbines that have been put in residential areas that we haven't learned as a society that we continue to, to put them in places they shouldn't be. I, I'm just, as an engineer, I, I, I find it so confusing and offensive. And I also find it offensive as an engineer, my colleagues who know this, and they like Atlantic engineering, I shouldn't say that, and they go ahead and they, they do the siting criteria for them. You know, in my years as an engineer, I would turn down projects that I thought were morally wrong. And that's why I'm here before you, because I know that I believe in the morality of people to do the right thing. And sure, we could have lodged a big suit, but we're putting ourselves in your hands to do the right thing. And the right thing we will, we will do, it's, there's a lot of stuff here to digest, and it can't be done in an hour long meeting. Well, we're just getting sicker and sicker as it goes on. It's, we're going to move. I understand that. I, and, and the stuff here is emotional and it's touching and, and I understand it. I, I, I feel like a rather a sinking ship because I'm going to Florida in a couple of weeks yeah. for a couple of months. Yeah, yeah. And I'll feel better. But a lot of my other co sufferers here, they're stuck here year round. They have to get sicker and sicker and listen to this. Please right. do something about it. Yes, yes, yes. My name is Ken Ingber. I'm uh, uh, at 16 New Driftway. Um, I'm a supporter of the wind turbine. The people who have spoken have spoken very eloquently in my view. Um, they've spoken about a wide variety of things. They've talked about personal, the personal effects. They've talked about public policy. They've talked about science. Um, and there's, a, there's an awful lot here, as you said, to digest. There are some, um, uh, there's a recent study that, that the, the Commonwealth had commissioned on wind uh, energy and scientific uh, study. There's a fellow in uh, the next town of Cohasset who also authored a uh, study on, on uh, the effects, the medical effects of wind. That's available as well. Clearly a, a, a one town board of health is going to have its hands full to try to manage this sort of thing. Uh, there are other resources out there, this sort of um, more, more global type of resources, especially the, uh, the study that was uh, done by the state. That's, I think that was published maybe two or three months ago, so it's fairly recent, but it's out there. We it's, have that. Okay. So that, that has some, some excellent information. It's, it's a tough thing for a single town to be dealing with uh, issues of, of national policy, state policy, and individual uh, complaints, but um, it seems to me that, that you've, got, you've got to um, take all of that into account as, as touching as these personal stories are. They have to be modulated by, um, by the more scientific, more rigorously um, um, uh, done studies so that there is some, some sort of balance and some sort of rationale to the way the, uh, the town 
operates. Um, I'm Sumal Shah with Situate Wind. I realize in this particular audience I'm not necessarily the most popular person. Uh, I'm really here to, to, to listen to everybody's stories and in, in some cases, at least in Situate, this is the first time that I'm hearing a lot of these stories. Um, I'm very anxious to work with the Board of Health um, and uh, to the extent that you're willing to share data with us and, and likewise we'll be willing to share data with you to uh, correlate some of the data that you have with the uh, performance of the turbine and what may be happening. And, uh, you know, obviously we'd like to work uh, cooperatively with the Board of Health. Um, you know, this process from, uh, from the beginning has been a cooperative process between um, our organization as a developer and with the town. Uh, we responded to an RFP, we followed the rules of the RFP, we, uh, there was a permitting process in place, we followed the rules of the permitting process and uh, have uh, you know, built a, a project that's, uh, in our view, fully compliant with all of the uh, you know, rules that were in place at the time. And so we're committed to uh, maintaining that standard and, and uh, working with the town to, uh, as, as may be, and as, as, you, as, as the board sees fit. Thank you. Does Jennifer have your card? Do you have a card? No. Yeah. May I caution the board? Be careful what you share with Mr. Shaw. Some of this is medical information. And you might be in violation of HIPAA laws. You know, those papers I gave you. You gave about, what you give us is a public no, document. No, you're a public health department. You're right. a public health department. Yes. It's different than <coughs> that. It's different if we're getting it from a doctor, if we're getting it from a medical source, than if we're you're putting it forward at a public meeting. If somebody wants something back. Let us know. We'll give it back. All right. Any, any, any people and supporters here for this, if you have any problem with the papers that I've submitted to them as far as your, your complaints and everything, please let the board Most know. Most of it's symptoms. The symptoms, I'm, I'm saying. The <coughs> symptoms and whatnot. Well, I think as time goes on, uh, the symptoms will be, we'll, we'll be seeking treatment. It's just we haven't got, you know, we, have, we don't know where we're going. <coughs> so I think as the time goes by, the, the symptoms will be diagnosed and there will be treatment. So I think you'll have, you know, I would submit anything that I got from the doctor directly to you. So. Listen, we've only had six months beginning phase, so give it time. Yeah. Again, I say this not for myself. Anything I gave you relative to me is fine. But I have other people here that entrusted me yeah. with information. Well, we're a public entity, and that's one of the things okay. we have a meeting about. We, we are bound to be transparent. So. Okay. If you, like I said, if you want something back, let us know, we'll give it to you back. But. We have to be open. I don't think we would have signed it if we thought that, that we had a high rate. Okay. The other thing, if I may, is that um, with the state of Massachusetts, um, perhaps to avoid conflict of interest, other areas may be examined for these kind of facilities and the same kind of health problems. Well. I, th I think we're I th looking at this one as just I think what right my, here. I think what my board needs to do is we need to go through all the material we have, decide what material we might not have, and then try and, and windle it down to different points on what we can make a decision on or not make a decision on. Um, In some cases, we'll be fighting City Hall, but if we have to, we have to. Um, that's our charge, just to protect the health. So, thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, Sometimes you go against the grain on that, but if that's what it is, that's what it is. One, but there's I, certain I, things we have to look at, and that's why I say it. That, that's why we came. Emotional people go under advisement. Just, it's like I said, it's an awful lot to digest in one night. But you guys have presented an excellent. Case. There's no question about it. You've done your homework, and it, it, it doesn't leave much question. So, but uh, you no, know, it's gonna it's gonna take us a while. We were doing some other things, but we're gonna st we're gonna have to do this too now. This is going to the top priority. And, and, and we have to bring Frank up. Frank, yeah, we, we gotta get Frank up to speed. Up. I mean, I'm I'm sure that none of us that have come forward are gonna be popular with a lot of the people in town. I mean, other residents. 
because they don't truly understand the complexity. Well, yeah, they don't live where you live. Yeah. And you people are going to be <clears throat> unpopular too if, if you do what you're supposed to do. Been there before, it doesn't bother me. Like water off a duck's back. But you have the charge of protecting us. Right, that's yeah. you. absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Thank you very much. If, if either of the three of you would like to come to my home, and whether it's at 3 o'clock in the morning or at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, I invite all of you to come. I invite this whole room to you come to the town to come. I, 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 I want to see the cooker. I don't plan to see that. It's wet because it makes and it's rhythmic, so it's like a strobe, like this. Everything, like the shadows of the sculpture and the wall. It was bad on the driftway this morning. My wife was going. Uh, it's it's shifted. Yeah, it shifted. Yeah, the wind shifted. It was right on the driftway. Yeah, I noticed that she too. She said it was bad. Yeah. Very, very bad. I started at Go Green when I went to get my firewood earlier. Is, is there a, a um, an ability for the Board of Health to talk as an interdepartmental a matter with the planning board that gave the permits to sort of? share information and what, what that's part mean. of the stuff i gotta look okay. at because to, to make a reaction tonight it, it, yeah, it could be disastrous all around and, and it, it is to talk to the other boards to dpw to planning board to see the selectmen kind of get a feel um like you said it's public interest public health at its best but it, it, there's a little protocol there before it, like i said it's a lot to digest this the stuff we gotta look at i mean the information you provided it's it's there there's problems um, but can't just. I have a question about procedure. What would you? I mean, we, right. if you talk to the planning board, will that be a public meeting? You know, will you generate that? Will you um, initiate that? Um, I mean, I, I don't understand what the next step is. Well, the, the next, the next, I think the yeah. next step is is we have to get ourselves together, mm -hmm. and we have to come up with a plan of what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Because there's many different aspects to this. I mean, we've got testimony, we have studies, we have um, politics, we, we have what happens in other towns and countries. Um, what can we legally do, what can we not do? Um, There's, there's a bunch of stuff we, like I said, we have to come up with, we have to digest what we have and we have to come up with, with points of, of action of what we need to do. And one of that will probably be meeting with other town entities. Um, we can ask to meet with them, but they don't have to meet with us. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's a two-way street with these people. So, you know. We're so we certainly try and you know if 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 there's a if it's a one member two member subcommittee uh, and they report back to the board that's one thing if it's if it's a quorum by each board then it has to be open meeting so um, you know if if there's if there's a gatekeeper for all of you that we could notify. Um, Otherwise, it's like, going to be very busy setting out singular stuff, trying to uh, to um, you know, notify you of when we we are. It's going to be public meeting. Then you have to notice. Yeah. That's, that's all we can. Yeah. Is it beyond your scope to ask the community at large? Um, I mean, this is one guy sending out 300 letters. You know. Uh, but is it, if it, it comes out there, there may be people in Marshfield, there may be people across the way that... Maybe we get the media involved. Well, I don't well, know. The thing, the thing I don't is, know is, is we only have jurisdiction over situation. Right. And, and, and that's who we're in charge of caring about. Well, there's complaints in Marshfield that's coming from outside of the line. I mean, it, it, will add, it will add information to us, but it isn't necessarily going to change what we're trying to do for you. Right, right. Sir. Russell, uh, were you all involved in the initial approval of this uh, no, construction? Really. Did they I mean, ask your opinion? <coughs> well, I think we they shot. asked us for comments, but the, the in whole industry was so new, and I was and I read some of the reports that were supplied, 
And, you know, I didn't know the difference between what we were building for a turbine and what the studies were on different turbines. And and if for and if for sound, I mean, I'm not. I mean, I know a lot of things about a lot of things, but this isn't one of them. I think going back, I, we might have seen a site plan, but there was no septic involved. There really wasn't any. It's in a commercial area. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think this board really had anything to, to do with it. And uh, like I say, communication with woods. If there's a subdivision, we'll see the first stage of it with septic, and I mean, there's the light communication to make sure everybody's on board. So um, I'm sure it came across this desk, but it was probably it was probably as it a wasn't site plan. detailed. It was yeah, yeah. It was just. I mean, I mean, look at the DPH and, and DEP only came out with their independent study a few months ago, and that was after uh, how many were already permitted and built. I mean, so this information is going to be very helpful to you. Yes. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Tremendously. Do you yeah. want us to continue to send you complaints via email them, or have you had enough? <laughs> <laughs> I've never had enough. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, well, I will email you the Board of Health email. Whenever you have another night, zing them one. Well, if you haven't already spoken. No, no, well, I think it's to keep going to show that, that there's a consistency yeah, right. or when it affects you versus when it doesn't affect you. Yeah, then remember, this is the first year. And it maybe affects you differently at different times of the year. So for at least for the first year, if you guys can keep a log, you don't have to send it to us all at once. But, you know, maybe periodically we want to touch base with you to see, okay, we've just been three, through three months of a different part of the year. Has it? Are you still experiencing everything the same as what you told us before, or has something changed? Because, like I said, the wind direction changes, the strength mm -hmm. changes, the temperature's different, the density's different. These are all the trees. The sun's moved to a different part of the. So I mean, you know, we're still in our first year, so I think it would be advantageous if you could keep a record somehow. You know. You, Jennifer, you were saying earlier you have to find out what other towns are doing. Kingston and Fairhaven have a on their website a form where you can log in and wage a complaint. As a matter of fact, those forms you have have been fashioned after. So it's always on there and you can like, scan them. You said Kingston and uh, Fairhaven. As a matter of fact, the operators of the Situated uh, Wind also are the operators of Fairhaven. Yes. Do you happen to know, or does the representative of the company know, whether or not you had to go through um, the North River Commission? Or, 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 or. No, they didn't. It said it wasn't in their jurisdiction. That's why every house that's built along the river has to go through a design. It said it was in a commercial zone. I can explain it to you. In the, um, in the time when the North River Corridor was designated by the state, as you came in Scenic River, the town of Situate had no place to put their sewage treatment plant or their landfill. So in every other town along the river, the setbacks are a certain number of feet. But the whole commercial development of our plan development district on the driftway is due to the fact that Situate would not cooperate with the state unless the setbacks were made to be at the river's edge. So from the, from the sewage treatment plan up to the rotary, the setbacks are only to the edge of the river. Um, Does that mean there's no design review requirement? Yes. You so much. Plus, Joe, I think technically that's the yeah, first time we're up there. But that's that's how that that situation is exempt. I live on the First Harry River, and they certainly uh, have a loud voice on anything I do on my property. Right. In North River. They weigh in. Oh, yes. Yeah. Most of the equipment, most of the equipment, including um, waterfront. Well, we lost a lot of our rights to, uh, to to look at a lot of these things when we were classified a green community, too. The towns that can be changes uh, a lot of times without having uh, town meetings. Excuse me. Any idea you haven't spoken yet? No, I just yeah. wondered. Are there plans in the work for a number two turbine, a number yes. three turbine? Um, that would be very distressing if if that's rolling along and and 
working to becoming a reality. I don't think we've seen anything through this office. Like I haven't even heard it. But you said you weren't really, you weren't really consulted the first time around either. Correct. So that's why we haven't really heard anything. So, yeah. But sometimes I stand corrected because stuff will come through the office and it doesn't necessarily come to this board. You know, I think can, I, can, I, me, hold on. can I suggest that uh, you weren't aware of the first one, and there may be some others, but maybe you guys ought to be more proactive in worrying about it because now you see that it does have health effects. Well, I think it'll gain some... <laughs> People will understand, and, and before they make a second choice, they're going to look at it a little differently. I mean, it, there's legitimate complaints here, so um, you know, I'm, I'm sure it will. Yeah, and I'm sure people too, when they hear windmill coming, they'll be more active. Oh, go to the meetings and voice that, hey, we've got problems. Do you want that? Do you want this? So I'm sure. Yes, sir. I think that as you consider the construction of more of these, there are three parties that view this as an asset and one distinct party that views this as a liability. The parties that view it as an asset are Celaya, who's a construction company that gets paid to build and operate. Palmer Capital, who syndicates those to high net worth individuals. I, I, I don't want to get in into the this town. tonight, though, sir. But the liability is us. Right. And so that they all can make money, we get sick. I, I, I understood, right? I, yeah, we're here for the one that's still now and the problem's here. But, yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I'll follow this slowly, um, glad to wait. Just a quick question, and I understand taking it under advisement tonight, you know, a lot of information, but I'm not trying to compare it to the Tripoli situation. But um, can we, I mean, your next meeting is in two weeks. Can we, um, I'm expecting, well, what, we, what can we expect at your next meeting? Or, <laughs> Will it be any? I'm not going to expect, but should we? I can't I even beat that far ahead right okay. now with this smoke. Yeah, it's yeah, I think Jennifer articulated that we will be doing and we'll continue the, we'll continue the hearing and we'll fill in our, our third member uh, and we'll continue the process. So we, we don't want to come breathing down the neck in two weeks, but you, you, it would be appropriate. Welcome. More than welcome, and if, David, if you're kind of doing things and we know how many people are coming and if more people are coming we could get a bigger room too I'm sure we could right. figure something out. Yeah. Well I'll give you two contacts both myself and my, my other yeah. co well, To accommodate I, I you know I contact. understand the emotion here and uh, we want to accommodate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you Dave. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.